Hi, and welcome to this presentation on a CRP circuit best practice application. My name is Ryan Orbell, the National Segment Manager at Burkett for the hygienic industry. At Burkett, hygienic covers the food, beverage, dairy, and pharmaceutical industries. Hygienic is one of the four segments covered by Burkett, with the others being water, gas, and the microfluidic industries. Today, I would like to share with you a very short introduction. This should only take us no more than 15 minutes to present to you a successful best practice CIP application. Of course, this is not a one size fits all as every product and application can differ. Some additional cycles or steps may be required to those shown today. However, this is a very good basis and I will share with you some good insights to helping you to achieve a good and an efficient CIP process. A CIP system is best explained by the following. It is the cleaning of the complete items of plant or pipeline circuits without dismantling or opening of the equipment and with little or no manual involvement on the part of the operator. The process involves the jetting or spraying of surfaces or circulation of cleaning solutions through the plant under conditions of increased turbulence, flow velocity, time and temperature. Generally, the parts of the process to be cleaned will include everything that comes into contact with the product, such as tanks, valves, pumps and fittings. Of course, Today, most modern food and beverage businesses have adopted process automation in one format or another. However, the technology avail available today has continually evolved quite considerably over the past few years, leading to improvements in design, efficiency and reliability. With this new technology, we now offer our customers more ownership and information regarding management of your assets. With the involvement of Industry 4.0, there are now many automation methods that can be adopted to increase the gathering of additional data, which directly supports schedule maintenance intervals rather than interruptions in the day-to-day -day running of your operations. So what is a CIP system? There are three stages. In the first step, we use mechanical force. Here we use the water to remove the buildup of residues through impacts and turbulences. In the chemical step, we use suitable chemicals to break up and remove any remaining residues through chemical actions. And then we have the sterilization and the sanitation step. This kills any remaining microorganisms and the biofilm to an acceptable level. The water is used for the initial flush and clean of the system, creating impacts under pressure and turbulences through the correct flow profiles under conditions of turbulent flow. If sugar is present, you will start with a hot water flush to help dissolve the sugars. With the alkali, most of the food products, including milk and dairy, will contain proteins and fats. Therefore, an alkali detergent is required to help break this down. And then we have the acid. If the product contains salts and minerals, then a suitably qualified strength of acid is required. The acid helps to remove any scale buildup in the pipes. But not every CRP application will require an acid rinse every time, and the frequency will be determined by the product and application. Many applications may only demand an acid cycle once every several weeks, or maybe not even at all. An efficient cleaning recipe is based on four key parameters. Time. The time the flush, the rinse water, or the chemical is in contact with the process to be cleaned. We have the temperature of the cleaning products. This is typically set to anywhere between 50 to 75 degrees Celsius to break down the fats, the proteins, the salts and the minerals. Then we have the mechanics. This is the turbulent flow velocity required and the pressure to clean the soil from the surfaces. 
And we have the cleaning agents and chemicals, which must be a suitable concentration strength to obtain a clean process. But we also must ensure that strong design principles are implemented. Remember, you can't clean what you can't contact, so there should be no dead leg zones or undrainable pockets that you can't access. And of course, the clean and place cycle must be separated from the process cycle to prevent any cross product contamination. So now we are going to dig a bit deeper into understanding the principle of each of the CIP sequences. The pre-rinse is the first step. The pre-rinse cycles through the heat exchanger. This brings the cleaning agents up to temperature and goes out the CIP supply to the equipment and cycles back via the CIP return and down to drain. The pre-rinse cycle is responsible to physically clean the equipment to remove all of the visible dirt from the surface under conditions of turbulent flow. The correct fluid velocity must be achieved to obtain good cleaning. This turbulent flow is achieved between 1.5 to 2.1 meters a second. And generally the pre-rinse cycle is set at a time by the commissioning engineer until the CIP return order is running clear. In the pre-rinse step, it is very important to achieve the correct flow velocity to achieve good cleaning. Laminar flow does not provide good cleaning characteristics due to the flow profile. Therefore, turbulent flow is the objective to achieve a better flow profile and therefore to achieve a much better clean. In the second step, the cleaning agents, the chemicals are introduced. A caustic solution is used to break down the fats and the proteins. These cleaning agents will be addressing the areas that could be detected by taste or smell, but are not visible to the naked eye. The caustic solution is circulated through to the plant equipment to be cleaned via the CIP supply and returns via the CIP return. The sensors in line will monitor the temperature to ensure the media is at the correct temperature, flow to confirm the correct flow velocity is achieved and a conductivity sensor to determine the product differentiation between the water and the caustic. So the caustic by the concentration level can be returned to the caustic tank. The remaining caustic is then chased from the system by the fresh water tank or the rinse recovery tank and the conductivity sensor detects the return of caustic to tank and when the water is detected the water is either returned to a rinse recovery tank or down to drain. In the third step the cleaning agents the acid is introduced. In this step the acid base is used to remove the salts and the minerals. The acid solution is circulated through to the plant equipment to be cleaned. This goes out via the CIP supply and returns via the CIP return. The sensors in line will monitor the temperature to ensure the media is at the correct temperature, the flow to confirm the correct flow velocity is achieved, and a conductivity sensor to determine when the acid by the concentration level is returned to the acid tank. The remaining acid is then chased from the system by the fresh water tank or rinse recovery tank and the conductivity sensor again detects the return of acid to tank. And when the water is detected, the water is either returned to the rinse recovery tank or down to drain. Some CRP applications may only require an acid rinse once every several weeks. And this is designed to reduce the scale buildup in the pipes. Hence why every application can differ and it is not a one size fits all. Some applications such as juice may not even use an acid wash at all. And then we have the cleaning agents where we need to disinfect. The object here is to introduce a suitable disinfectant to destroy or inactivate any serious fungi or bacterias. Here we can recover to the rinse recovery tank for the first flush in the next CIP sequence. The flush water is designed to remove or chase the cleaning reagent from the production system. It usually contains some residual cleaning reagent and can be captured and reused provided that it is of a quality that is fit for purpose for the intended use. 
The rinse recovery tank is a different tank to the mains water tank. Therefore, the rinse recovery is used for the first rinse of the next CRP cycle. So how can we help? Anywhere where process control is required, such as the on-off process valves in the CIP circuit to control the flow paths for the product and cleaning media, the modulating control valves interfacing with the heat exchangers to ensure correct media temperature is achieved, the flow and temperature sensors to ensure correct flow velocities on both the CIP supply and CIP return lines, in fact, these flow meters, sorry, in fact, these flow meters can also detect the change in media in the process line to determine when to return the chemicals to the tank or the water to the drain, plus conductivity sensors to monitor the process to validate the concentration and cleaning target levels are met, as well as smart transmitters and controllers. Typically, Burkitt can help you anywhere that makes your process more efficient. Most CIP sequences are never altered following installation. They are usually set to defaults, which are set during commissioning. However, CIP operators can optimize their systems by monitoring a number of key parameters continually. These are what temperature and concentration or conductivity are the caustic tanks set to. Often they will be set too high with no added benefit. Consider the pre-rinse, does it run clear and then keep going? Is the pre-rinse eliminating sufficient residue? Could it operate more efficiently? The caustic fill, how high are the return conductivity and temperature transmitters set? Keeping parameters as near as possible to the effective temperature and conductivity leads to more efficient processes rather than delivering no added benefit, but more cost and resource inputs. Water is often your most valuable asset, so a constant monitoring system to reduce the unnecessary consumption of water, and for that matter heat, can go a long way to optimizing your CRP costs. You really want to avoid any wasted resources wherever possible. So as you've seen, it is necessary during planning of your production processes to consider a suitable clean in place installation that meets your hygiene requirements. With a number of strategically located system houses spread out across the globe, Burkitt extend our offering from a product supplier to extensive engineering and consulting where we can design, build and deliver complete system solutions. So with extensive cross segment experience and a broad product portfolio consisting of controllers and transmitters, sensors, process valves, analytical monitoring systems, and numerous other intelligent automation concepts to control compatible components, Burkitt can ensure a robust, clean, and efficient solution in virtually any application. So today we have proven to you that we have field hardware competence. We offer leading technology and process automation. We meet all network demands and we offer support from local and international teams. Well, that concludes today's short introduction to a successful CRP application. Of course, as I said earlier, this is not a one size fits all as every product and application can differ. If you would like to discuss your application further and how we can help, then please reach out to me. I'm looking forward to hearing from you. Thank you for your time today.